All right. This is where we're. This is what we're going with, regardless of of. Uh, this is what we'll go with. Okay. Um, let's see. This is kind of like when a bill becomes a law, right? A, you know, one bill passes the House, <laughs> one bill passes the Senate. Then we got to go to committee to to work out and iron out the differences. First of all, what questions did you guys ask me through this? You asked each, each team, I think, or I know, I know one team did, but you had some questions for me. What, what questions did you ask? Was there a limit to how many clubs a student could sign up for? Was there a limit to a, how many clubs a student could sign a, a, up for? And that, that, I suppose, is a good question. Let's think about that for a second. In database, there's only three numbers in databases. All right, we've simplified counting, so you don't know you don't need to know how to count very high at all to be a database designer. What are the three numbers in database counting? One, many, no. Zero, one, and many. All right. In other words, if it's more than one, it's many. All right. Um. What if there was a rule on campus, though, that said that, hey, you know, we don't want our students overextending themselves, so you can only belong to three clubs, all right? I guess, to me, that doesn't sound like a structural rule. That sounds more like a subject to change, and I might kind of go against what I typically say about implementing constraints in the database and implement that on the, on the, uh, on the application level. All right. So from the database perspective, to give the most flexibility and all that, more than one equals many. Okay. All right. Now, and again, but that, that was a good question. I think I gave a snarky answer that I wasn't <laughs> developing the database. You were. So yes, that you call that. Yeah. Uh, other, other questions that you asked me? Yeah. Uh, can an event have more than one sponsor? Can an event have more than one sponsor? And that's good, because that was very vague, right, the way I put it. And it seems reasonable based on your experience, and some people brought some experience that they had in clubs and all that, to ask the question, in this case, is it possible for uh, uh, an event to have more than one sponsor? All right? Now, that's a case where maybe, and, and I don't know, you can go back and watch it, maybe the way I wrote it implied that only one group sponsors an event. But it's okay to question your users and are you sure about that? You know, is there ever a case? And, and, and sort of ask those questions that, that um, can you think of a case? Uh, you don't necessarily want your users imagining anything that they can imagine. Well, yeah, I suppose there could be a club that, well, don't suppose, you know. Let's think about things that have really happened, and, and let, let's, let's try to be realistic and not let, you know, not go crazy with, with speculation. All right, but it's okay to say, really, is, is every event, even, even really big events, are they always sponsored by just one group? Oh, well, wait a minute, yeah, some of the bigger events, you know, and then you can get to that. So that's a good question to ask. What was uh, another question? I think, yeah. Can an advisor be in charge of more than one club? Yeah, can an advisor be in charge of more, more than one club? And that's a good question. Uh, because the way it said, the way it was phrased, I gave you half the information that you need. All right? I said a club has one advisor. I never said how many clubs an advisor can have. So you might look and say, well, there doesn't seem to be a good reason why a an advisor, and you might assume that. But again, if there's any doubt in your mind at all, ask. All right? Other, I, them, I think that might be all your questions, unless I'm forgetting. Uh, you had. Yeah, the question about whether this hooked anything or not, I don't think is really relevant in, in where we were going for this. You know, uh, if, the, if this really was like going to be a comprehensive system, yeah, it would have a lot more attributes for student and faculty and so on. But we still would have a student table and still would have a faculty table. And it would be involved in a lot of other relationships with other tables, but again, we'd still at least have this. Um, this group, did you have questions for me? Any questions? Through the process, that is. Some of the same as there. Okay. All right. Okay, let's look at this. What are the
are the differences between this and that? The number of tables is the obvious difference because we can just count and do that. They got seven. It's because they have a category table. They have a category table. So what do we think about that? Pardon me? I said that's what the dictionary is for. That's what the dictionary is for. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, you better hope they have a dictionary and not a thesaurus, right? Because if they have a th th thesaurus, that's a hard word for me to pronounce, uh, they could have a club being categorized as athletics, sports, uh, physical competition, you know, and, and do it a, a number of different ways. So, collectively, do we think a category table is a good idea? Yeah, category table is a good idea. The way I phrased it, uh, again, I, I, I implied that there was only a handful of things, but you know what? There could be some other kind of, of categories that we would want to be interested in. And if you imagine, for example, let's say I wanted to contact all the faculty advisors that advised an athletic uh, club so that I could give them maybe some safety information. Again, if, if they can enter in sports and athletics and whatever, then it would be difficult to do with that. So, we'll go and change this to category ID that will have a relationship to a category table. Are the tables now the same except for perhaps names and except for perhaps um, maybe made up a few extra attributes. Okay. Let's take a look at it. Yeah. Yeah. Great minds think alike. Yeah. I would say they are the same. Other than, you know, some you filled in attributes. A uh, couple of things. One thing with this, um, typically in, in databases, you don't need a separate date and time field. They're, they're date time fields. All right. Because the time, re you know, if you talk about a time, it is, you know, 11, 16 now. That's not really the time. The real time is October 25th, 2012 at that. So there's the, 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 the things in the database are, are typically stored as, as date time fields. Yes? Um, this might be a little off topic, but when you uh -huh. collect that data from the database to display it, I assume there's a way you can separate it? Yeah, absolutely. It. Okay. Uh, and that's an important point. Remember, and that's a good point, and, and that's what sometimes leads people astray in database design. And I'm not implying that's what happened to you here, but in other cases. For example, I've heard people say things like this. Well, if I printed out a listing of clubs, I would need to know the advisor name and their email address. So I better put the advisor name and email address in that table. That's sort of like spreadsheet thinking. That's where the way you're storing the data is tied very tightly to the way that you're presenting the data. The idea of relational databases is we store it in a logical, normalized, and we haven't really talked about normalization formally yet, all right? We store it in a normalized structure, but we can then present it any way we want to because we have stored these things in a good, sound way. So we can, sure, we can print a list that, that uh, shows clubs with their advisor name and email address. Absolutely. We, can, we just write a query that combines those two things together. The flexibility of databases allows us to query things and do things any way we want. Likewise, you might say, gee, wouldn't it be good to know how many sports clubs there were? So let's have a number of clubs of this category in here. Well, no, because you could just go out and count the number of clubs for each category there through a query statement. So, again, don't think in terms of how you want to display or present the information. Think of the, the logical structure of it, all right? And yes, absolutely, you can, if you only needed to show the date, 
you could show only the date okay. if you wanted to on, on, on some screen or whatever. Right. What discussions did you have in your group? Uh, let's think of the let's think of the biggest disagreements. I mean, not like little ones like, do they really need a Facebook page? You know, <laughs> not, not that not that kind of thing, but like more like bigger disagreements. Yes. Uh, when we did location mm -hmm. on, the, on the activity table, we were um, trying to decide how, like, whether to make another table to store all the location information because it could be on campus versus off campus, and that could, like, you don't really talk about a street address on campus, so it would be really different kinds of data to be stored. Okay. Different fields. What do you, what, what's the, it, it's clear what one, all right? <laughs> it looks like you have location just as a free form field, and you have location up here too, which, which is fine, I guess. I guess I'm most interested in the activity having a location. I guess a club can have a, a location. But usually you think more in terms of the event having a location. So you guys decide on just a free form and not have a table. What do you guys think about that? Well, think about it now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, free form location. Free form location versus a location table. to make sure that the recycle bin that was supposed to be in the picnic area was actually there. 
Yeah, maybe that's relevant because, you know, a national park, you know, you should keep it clean and there should be recycle bins and, and, and trash bins and all that. So the point is, is you always have to consider the relevance to the particular problem domain. So you have to ask yourself, how important is us to be able to um, systematically record the location as opposed to just free form? And by systematically, I mean limit that. It is a good observation to say that there are some events that are on campus, some events are off campus. All right? How would we handle that? We could handle that a couple different ways, right? We could have a location table that had a switch that said whether it's on campus or off campus and then had different information. We could do actually an entity subtype, which is sort of an advanced database thing where we have a location table and we had two subtypes of loca locations, on campus or off campus. Or we could do something like have a location table that consisted only of campus locations and if it's off campus you just type in the address. Because I don't want to have to put in every coffee shop in the world that a club might meet at, um, you know, you know, for a particular event. What do you gain versus lose for that? Well, again, someone mentioned facilities management. If part of the problem domain of this was facilities management, in other words, you know, back, when was it, in, in, in May or, or April or whenever it was, President Obama comes to the College Center, right? Well, that's going to have an impact on all the clubs that uh, are, have events scheduled that day, right? They're probably going to have to cancel their meetings. All right. We don't want to see members of the, the, you know, could you see the members of the, you know, the, the Renaissance Club in their chain mail and all that trying to show up for their meeting as the president's arriving surrounded by Secret Service. It, it wouldn't, wouldn't give us the kind of publicity that we would want here on campus. All right. So therefore, if facilities management was an issue, then... Yeah, you, you might want to include that. So we can look and we can know for sure what are all the events in there. So either have some sort of other table that included all locations or um, had one that just contained campus locations and free form the rest. Now, what are the off-campus locations that people have clubs? Are there a handful of them or are there a bunch of them? I don't know. You might want to research that. Because if there's only a handful of other places that people have meetings, Maybe you just put those in the location table and simply designate whether it's on campus or off campus. That would be a possibility. Um, the problem with uh, what you get for free form is the ability you can put anything that you want to in and you're not tied to a specific location table. Because again, like people said, hey, the theater club is going to meet, or the Tai Chi club is going to meet under that oak tree that's over there between the li you know, the old library and the phys ed building, all right? Well, that's kind of hard to pinpoint a location to because not all of them are associated with rooms and all that, all right? So you have the flexibility of not having to put every tree in campus that any meditation club might, might want to meet at in, in doing that. Or if there were many off-campus locations, such as we're going to meet at Bill's house, all of a sudden, we have a student senate meeting scheduled at Bill's house because they entered something in wrong or whatever, and, and it wouldn't go good. I guess those are all the considerations. And you sort of got that. You sort of got that uh, in, in your discussion and what you said in between that. But again, um, I think the big overriding consideration would be relevance to the problem domain. All right? Questions? Yes. Uh, you know, on the car rental database, yes. we're talking about date and time. Is there any way we can get the time out of there? Because I tried formatting differently in Access, and the time was still there. Well, it's, it's going to be stored as a date time field, but we can present it just as a date. That doesn't mean that you can't do it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, you have to store it as a date time field, but and you can format it. And we can take a look at that in lab. Because, yeah, otherwise, if you don't put uh, a time in, it, it like shows like midnight, I believe, or something like that. 
I, I do have to say, and I don't mean to be frivolous here, I always think that that's a bottle of Jack Daniels when I see that. Just how it's shaped <laughs> and the color. Yeah, maybe it is, you know. It's like, the, I remember the first day you brought that in, it's like, is she chugging a bottle of Jack Daniels? It's like, are my lectures that painful? <laughs> you know? I guess I'm okay with it. You know, you're not disrupting things, so. You, yeah. You know, you do it well in the class, more power to you, you know. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah. warn us when you're leaving. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> now here's here's a curveball. I gotta have I gotta have a couple curves, right? Uh, I, I joke that it's always, you know, in the yoga class, uh, when I've when I've taken yoga classes in the past, like if you do the one pose, you know, they say good job for about thirty seconds, but then what they do is they give you a harder pose. It's like Oh, you got that right then. Well, how about this? Do the same thing except standing on your head, you know? <laughs> One thing that we did not address, I didn't ask you to address it, so I could understand maybe you not addressing it, but are there any candidate keys here that we would want to implement as a unique index? Any candidate keys that we would want to implement as a unique index? Yeah. You speak up. Yes. You might want to, like, what if you wanted to search for a room that held a certain number? Like, I really need a room that holds 200. Okay. So. That would be a different sort of index. That would be an index to, to facilitate searching. You know, um, it, it, this would likely be small enough that that really wouldn't be needed, that you really wouldn't have a performance hit. But if you did, that really wouldn't be a, a unique index because there could be more than one room that had 200 in it. So that wouldn't be a candidate key. All right. So what I'm referring to is the bit that we did with candidate keys where we need a unique index. Yes. Mm -hmm. The name should be unique. Yeah. I would think that the category name should be a unique index. Right? You don't want to have two categories called sports. All right? Because then it would be like, you know, you do a search by category. Well, do you want this sports or this sports? You know, it would be very confusing. So the name of the category conceivably could be the key to it, right? Because every category is going to have a name, and really not ought to be two categories that have the same name, all right? Even if, you know, they're related, um, maybe you wanted to say, um, you know, uh, what would be an example, you know, winter athletics, summer athletics, for example, um, you'd qualify them, all right? Anything else, any other candidate keys? Yes? Maybe advisor name address, like the combination of the two. I just thought if there were two people with the same name, you would want to, like if you just, I guess that's for searching too, if you wanted to search on there. Well, again, name. advisor name, yeah, we can build an index on that, but advisor name really isn't a candidate key, all right? Um, it is unlikely that there could be two people with the same name and the same address, but I'm not sure I'm, I'm, I'm going to want to build that constraint in the database. Could be two Joe Joneses living in an apartment complex. No, I didn't think they would be in the same address. What do you mean the same address? I thought, like, the two of them being unique together, like, name and address. Right. Can't you? Right. Never mind. So Joe Jones and, and Joe Jones could live at Jones Manor, right? So they could have the same address. I, I you know, I don't see, I don't, I don't see that, you, that buying anything, really. I will agree with you that you might want to create an index for searching on advisor name, you know, provided that there was enough data to, to justify that. And again, thinking of campus here with 100 and some full-time faculty, eh, you probably don't really need it. But you definitely wouldn't think of creating a unique index. 
other unique indexes. Yes? Um, combination of name and date for an event. Combination of name and date for the event. Maybe. Um, that sounds good. At first I thought you were going to say event name, but it's like, couldn't there be two campus picnics? But it's kind of unlikely that there's two campus picnics on the same day. And if there was, you better give them different names. So do you want to go to the, you know, someone comes on campus, where the camp, where, you know, where's the campus picnic at? Well, do you want the campus picnic or do you want the campus picnic? Right? You know, it's over there or over there, you know. So maybe like business student campus picnic, engineering student campus picnic. So yeah, same date, the same event. Yeah, you probably want to, you probably want to constrain that to be unique. Yes? How about club name? Club name too, yeah. You wouldn't want two web development clubs. They're named web development. Even if there were two that were similar and related, and one was, you know, let's say, from a design perspective, user interface development, and one was web programming. You'd want to give them different enough names that it was clear that uh, that's, that, that's what they were. Um, and, and I wouldn't, you know, I, I would think that you'd want different names as opposed to just like changing the description or whatever like that. So yeah, I would say, yeah, these two probably a unique index, and this probably a unique index. Anything else? That's about all I could see. Anyone have any other additions? You might be tempted to say Facebook and Twitter. I was tempted. You were tempted? I was tempted. But it would be at least conceivable that um, a group of clubs kind of tweet on the same Twitter account. You know, is that something that you want to build in to, to, to that and restrict that? I don't think so. I don't think you gain anything for that. All right. You have a problem if there's two events with the exact same name on the, on the same day because people will be confused. You have a problem if um, you have two clubs that are called the same thing. Which club do I want to join? Two clubs are tweeting using the same account. Okay. I follow one. I follow the other. Not that big a deal. Any questions on this? In general, I, I, I'm very happy with how you did on this. You, you, did, you did a good job. It seems like you asked the right questions. You, you, you considered the proper things. And, you know, you, you, you both came up with essentially the same solution. Um, my guess is that that was just an oversight. Uh, that was just something that, you know, if you weren't, you know, if, you, if we did not have the time, the, the time constraints, so you probably would have came up with, with uh, that category if you had it longer to think about it. All right. We'll see you over in lab.